and it matters greatly because it affects us in ways that you will never believe. Nigeria campaigned and won on a platform of change. Change of what? Change for what? Change to what? It's one thing to change a person in office, remove and change a person. It's a totally different concept to change a person's behavior, a person's way of mind, a person's habitual behavior. Totally different. And so as we clamor for change in this era, in this era at this time, the question we must ask ourselves is that where does that change begin? And the one thing I can assure you is that that change must start from you, it must start from me. It's not a slogan. If we do not begin to look at ourselves and understand ourselves and know where we must change, then we have a big problem. So who are we? Who am I? As a nation, this question often confuses. We're confused because somehow, over the years, our historical roots are being eroded every single day. You speak to the young ones today, and as far as they're concerned, the history of Nigeria does not date back beyond the day they were born. You talk to those in my generation, and Nigeria's history, if at all, outside of 1960, they may just push back to 1914, albeit because we had a centenary a few years, or was it last year? But Nigeria's history goes further back. And it goes way beyond, way, way beyond the time of colonization. But this struggle has been immense. And it's one of the fundamental reasons why we find it difficult to know where we are going. Because we seem to have lost touch with where we are coming from. I've been convinced, no doubt, that the history that we have as a people, first as a black race, goes further back than beyond colonization, beyond the slave trade, long beyond. It goes back, as far as I'm concerned, to the book of Genesis. We're coming out, as the Bible says for those who are Christians, that coming out of Eden was a river, and the river split into four. And one of those rivers went round the nation of Cush, the first book of Genesis. That river was called Gihon, and in it, Africans find their roots. But even if you say, you know what, I'm neither Christian, nor am I Muslim, nor do I believe in God, and I only believe in facts. And let's assume that that is who you are. Then evidence, empirical evidence shows that going back to the year 1000 BC, a culture called the Nok culture existed, and it existed here in West Africa. In northern Nigeria, from my Aosa friends. Northern Nigeria has the oldest culture that we have as empirical, going back 1000 BC, long before Christ. The terracotta, terracotta sorry, of Nok culture is classified as one of the oldest, long before the Chinese famous terracotta that we have going back that far. It's said by historians and archaeologists, looking at the North culture, that
that the social system that was prevalent at the time was highly advanced. Let's not take it for granted that we do not have an idea of who we are. If we go to Yoruba history, archaeologically, the settlement of Ife can be dated back to the 4th century BC. Ife, art and sculpture. It hit its heydays in the 12th century, between 12,000 and 14,000 AD. A few years ago, I was invited to a program at the Museum of Natural Art in London. And Ife and Benin sculptures were put place to place uh, next to the art from the Renaissance in Europe. And it was said at that program, not by me, but it was said that the quality of art that came out of Ife and Benin within this period was far superior than the art of the Renaissance at the time. And when the Europeans then saw the quality of art that we brought, they were amazed that we had a civilization that could produce that kind of art back then. It amazes me that we sit today and we do not know how deep our cultural roots are. Another example from the East, so that at least politically we can say that we touched all geographical regions of Nigeria. There's a kingdom called Inri Kingdom. 1948 to 1911, a medieval state of West Africa. But this kingdom of Henry, from Wikipedia, you can check it up, says it was unusual in the history of world government at the time and today in that its leader never exercised any military power over his subjects. No military power, but the people obeyed. Would we not love a government today that can connect with people without force? But we had it in Nigeria. Its kingdom existed as a sphere of religious and political influence over a third of Igbo land. They managed trade and diplomacy on behalf of the Igbo people. You see, it's vital as a nation, individually and collectively, that we must build on our history. It killed me a few years ago, and I hope that has been changed, when I heard that history was taken out of our curriculum. I sincerely hope that that has been changed. Because in these stories and these examples that I gave are very pungent and deep truths about who we are as a people. So much is lost. So much is forgotten. It's sad that today our children know more about Michelangelo than they do about Moremi. They know a lot more about the Battle of Trafalgar and Napoleon than they do about Osman Danfodio. But who are we? We are artists. We are traders. We are orators. We are kings. We are priests. We are sculptors. sculptors. We are queens. We are warriors. We are dancers. We are acrobats. We are entertainers, we are farmers, we are sailors, we are travelers, we are miners, we are poets, we are mothers, we are fathers. And we have been this from the beginning of civilization.
till date, but most especially 